Hi everyone, I'm Mary, one of your friendly PCC librarians. In this tutorial, we'll be discussing how to search ProQuest library databases. By the end of this video, we will learn about the ProQuest databases and what they contain, we'll learn how to access the ProQuest databases, and we'll learn how to search the databases for articles on a particular topic. Okay, let's jump in. ProQuest is the name of a company that makes databases. These databases contain articles from magazines, newspapers, and scholarly peer-reviewed academic journals. PCC Library subscribes to a number of ProQuest databases, so today we'll use something called ProQuest Combined, which searches many ProQuest databases all at once. Lastly, note that PCC Library databases are free to use by current PCC students. Okay, next let's review how to access the database. We're going to start from the PCC Library homepage, which is at pasadena.edu slash library. On the library homepage, click on a button called Databases in the center of the red ribbon. This takes us to a full list of PCC Library databases listed alphabetically. Click on the letter P to get to the databases that start with P and scroll down until you see ProQuest combined. Click on the link. If you are prompted to log in, use the same login and password that you use for Lancer Point and Canvas. I'm already logged in, so the link took me directly to the ProQuest database. Okay, so let's review performing a search. First, ProQuest provides us with search boxes, and this is where we'll plug in our topic keywords to begin. So let's say we're researching climate change. Now, climate change is a very broad topic, but I've typed in climate change into my first keyword search box, and let's click on search and see what happens. And it's searching, so let's see what we get. Ah, a search on climate change returned almost 5 million results. That's way too many to browse through, but that's okay because I'll next demonstrate how to narrow down our search. So ProQuest allows us to change our search at any time by clicking on the Modify Search button. Okay, so now we're back to our original search on climate change. Now with a broad topic like this, it's recommended to brainstorm a subtopic or related topic. So for example, let's say we're interested in researching climate change and let's say its effect on tourism. So I've left climate change in my first keyword search box and I've typed in tourism in my second search box. Setting up our search in this way tells ProQuest to search for content that mentions both climate change and tourism. So I'm gonna click on search and let's see the results that we get. Okay, so now we have over 240,000 results, which is better than 5 million, but it's still a lot. So I'm actually going to click on Modify Search once more. I'm going to try to refine this just a little bit more because let's say I'm interested in researching a particular kind of tourism. So for example, say the cruise industry. I'm going to add a row right here and I'm going to put in cruise ships. Setting up my search in this way tells ProQuest to search for content that mentions climate change and tourism and cruise ships. So I'm going to click on search and let's see what results we get. Ah, this is a much more manageable number of results to begin browsing through. So now that we've got our search term set, let's review some of the handy filters available to us. So first there is what's called the source type filter. That's this area right here. And let's click on more. Using this feature, users can re can limit the results by specific source types. So for example, if you wanted to see just the news articles, then you could click off or click on newspapers. Same idea here, if you wanted to see just the magazine articles, you could check that off. Scholarly journal articles tend to be commonly used for college research assignments. So let's check this one off and click apply. The page refreshes. And now we've got just over 1,100 results that are all scholarly journal articles. Now, most scholarly journal articles are peer-reviewed, but let's also check off the peer-reviewed checkbox here to make sure we're getting just the peer-reviewed scholarly articles. 
And again, you may have seen that the page refreshed once more um, with our new filtered results. And we've got just over a thousand. Now let's review another helpful filter. And this one is called publication date. And that's this area right here. This is where users can select articles published within say the last 12 months, last five years, or even last 10 years. The database also allows us to enter a date range of our choice should we need to plug in a custom date range. I'm gonna go ahead and click on last five years and the page refreshes with our new filtered set. Now notice that there are a number of other filters available to us such as subject, document type, language, and more should we want to play with these later. Also notice that any filters currently applied will be listed here. And notice that our original search terms consistently stay at the top of the page each time the page refreshes. And we're still able to modify our search at any time if we want to edit our search. Okay, so now let's review how to get to the actual articles so that you may read them. So let's say I'm browsing through my results. And let's say I'm interested in this one right here titled Sustainable Cruise Tourism and Marine World Heritage Sites. So titles are clickable. So let's click on a title here. And now we are viewing the full text of the article. So this is the actual full text. Let's scroll back to the top. Let's review a few handy features available to us now that we're looking at an article. So first is the download PDF button. Uh, this allows users to save a PDF of the article. Also handy is the cite button right here. This button generates a citation for the article in a style of your choice, um, such as MLA or APA. And then also handy is this email button, which will send the full text of the article along with some other options to the email address of your choice. Okay, and let's review one last feature that comes in very handy, and that is this abstract slash details tab that is available for each of the articles. This is where users can review background details about the article, such as the abstract, some subject terms, uh, let's see, the title, authors, etc. What's especially useful on this tab is that this is where you can copy the link back to this article. It's important not to grab the link that is at the top of your browser right here. These links at the top are not stable and will eventually time out and not work. But on this details tab, look for a field that says document URL. Let's see. Here we go, document URL. This link right here that I've highlighted, this is a link that is stable and can be copied and shared with your professors and classmates and even in Canvas. Okay. Um, and last but not least, users may click on the back to results button to get back to the results page. Users may click on the advanced search button right here at any time to reset the search page. And you may click on the clear form button to start over with a fresh search. Okay, so remember that PCC Library is here to help. On the library homepage are helpful resources to help with your research, including the databases button, which takes users to the full list of library databases, um, in addition to the ProQuest databases. And there's the Ask a Librarian button, which takes users to all the different ways to get assistance from PCC Library, including chat, email, and even video conferencing. Thanks for watching.